guys, today's video is sponsored by the OneFootball app. If you haven't done it already, head down to the description before this video starts, click the link and download it completely free of charge on iOS or Android. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Charlton Athletic Career Mode. Now, you may be wondering why this video is so short, and it's because it's going to be a bit more of a quick fire episode covering the majority of the transfer window after we secured promotion from the uh, EFL League One to the EFL Championship. So I'm going to try my best to keep up with this commentary here. You can see we're doing a lot of training drills, trying to get players up to a rating that is very much more suited to a championship level. You can see that we are uh, advancing to some pre-season tournament invites here and we are going to go obviously with the one that gives us the most potential prize money. I think it was 3.4 million. Um, you can see here that our transfer budget overall for the season is a slightly disappointing 8 to 8.5 million depending on how you use that slider with the wages as well. So we definitely need to be winning this cup to generate some more um, some, some more transfer. So just to confirm some outgoings, Lapsley leaves on loan to go and get some game time at uh, Tian Shenjin, I think it was. Uh, Mark Marshall goes permanently to Jagiellonia. I don't know if I've just said that club name right. I swear, some of these clubs I never realise they even exist. And then a few player contract arrivals, you can pause there to see the four players that you already know about from previous episodes that we have secured on uh, on free contracts. So uh, good to see some of the players that we, uh, we signed quite a while ago eventually getting to come and meet the lads and actually get into our squad. We've also got a transfer budget increase, so that eight and a bit million that we were talking about earlier is actually as a result of, of Cholton being pleased with my performance last year and giving me extra, so it's 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 still very dismal, but apparently it could have been a lot worse. So that's pleasing to see. Now, if we go here and look at all the transfer targets, the very first player that I want to get into the club, or at least try, is going to be a, a loan target by the name of Brahim Diaz. He is one of the best young players on the entire game, and I think we need a bit of strengthening and a bit of support for the likes of Tariq Fosu and Diego Lanes on the wings. So uh, they eventually agree. I mean, Pep Guardiola was driving a hard bargain there, but they eventually agreed to, uh, agreed to let him go. It's a 40-60 split. Now with him in the squad, we can get in to our very first game um, with this uh, championship sort of... Uh, looming the championship campaign looming before us so Tenerife is the opponent we're going to get into this game now and uh, we've changed the formation a little bit I'll show you in the next episode guys but Tariq Fosu puts us 1-0 up then 2-0 up he's on some crazy goal scoring form uh, in this particular game and it looks like we're going to be heading for the three points and Diego Lenez chips in with a goal there for good measure um, like I said guys don't worry if this episode feels a little bit rushed because I will catch up on a lot of things in the next episode so a massive sign in here and we do manage to secure Juan Foyth or Foyt from Tottenham Hotspur for 5.1 million pounds so he's a really promising young Argentine centre-back and you will see that with the with the signing of De Vecchi as well from last season who's just joined up with the squad um, we have got a bit of an Argentinian theme as well as a Dutch theme you'll see as well uh, we also transfer list um, uh, what's his name Darren Prattley there we go his name's Darren Prattley because he is an aging player who is just going down in rating we've also got one of our youth players Mal who we may allow to leave on loan to some sort of team just to raise his rating up a little bit which is fine we also uh, obviously list uh well it says that we list Lapsley there but obviously we know that he's already gone out on loan so a few of the youngsters going out and getting some game time where they won't get it in the championship with us another player we are able to get into the club is Mavrapanos the young Greek center back from Arsenal so he's going to strengthen our defensive options quite significantly that's a nice player to get in for the season and we move on to this game it's the second game of the preseason tournament and it is against Molde and it's an away quote unquote away fixture um, the game considers it away I've said this a thousand times on FIFA videos on career mode videos but we are going to try and grab the win here we've rotated the squad a little bit but ultimately we've still got a very strong squad out there you can see Blackett's playing and a couple of other players as well so the score remains at 0-0 going in towards the 70th minute and then they do bag a goal through Orzanes again don't know if I've pronounced that right but they do take the win there in the second game and then we also confirm this loan signing of San Santiago Colombato from Cagli 
Ferrari, the Italian team, and he is an Argent another Argentinian player, so further strengthening that Argentinian uh, sort of vibe that we've got going on in the squad at the moment. And then we get straight in to this next game and the third and final game of the group stages of the preseason tournament against uh, Numancia. And we skip it and Forster Kasky literally scored in the 90th minute after a red card from Diamanka. So really, really nice um, last minute winner to put us through to the knockouts of this uh, of this preseason tournament. So then we move on straight away to this semi-final against Bran. Again, don't know where Bran are even from. I need to research some of these foreign teams a bit more because I have no idea. But we go straight away. Well, seven minutes in, we go 1-0 up through Tariq Fosu, which is really pleasing to see. Tariq Fosu has been on some really nice goal scoring form, as I've said, and uh, I'm hoping that he can take that into the season. Again, we're playing him in like a number 10 role. He scores a second goal as well, so he can definitely play in that. Uh, we're playing a 4-3-3 with him at sort of like the tip of the midfield, so he can definitely play there. Then Zhu comes on and actually scores, I believe, his first goal for the club, either his first or his second. So he's really getting in and amongst it now and getting some game time. Still 17 years old. And then a huge sale. Igor Vetekeli, who's been on our books for several years, does leave for 2.5 million. That was a really difficult one, but I think we can get somebody the same rating and a bit younger. Lyle Taylor wants to make that spot his own. We'll see about that. We get straight in then to the European International Cup final. And as you can see, Fosu again with the goal. We skip it and we did actually win 2-0. Fosu and the new signing Weber with the goals, which means we have won the uh, the preseason tournament and we are going to get 1.496 million it says there but overall we got about 3.4 and uh, they're very pleased with uh, the board are very pleased with our progress in that one so really nice that will probably enable us to buy another player and here is what we're going to spend that money on and he goes by the name this player of Calvin Stengs. I love his name. He's a he's a Dutch player. He plays on the right wing. He's got a number 14 shirt at the moment. And if you have a look down there, we actually, it's a bit of a weird one. I'll explain it a little bit more, but we we uh, in the future, but we did sell Blackett. We just didn't need him as we have Paige. Or I have faith in Paige. Then we sell Ben Reeves uh, alongside transfer, uh, transfer offer coming in for Dylan Phillips. And then we end up selling Dylan Phillips as well as Jamie Maskell. So three well, two really big players there that you maybe wouldn't have expected me to sell. And then Masco as well, a young player who's not, you know, just not good enough at this stage um, on this particular career mode. So Phillips, we are going to need to get a replacement in for him ASAP. And speaking of replacements and, and strengthening in certain areas, we go into the youth squad here. And Bang Wang is still chilling there. We're just having a look. And I do want to strengthen that midfield area because we are probably one player short. And we do need to look for a bit of a protege in that area. I'm having a look here. I look at Fang Ren, who is uh, only a potential of 75. And I'm going to release him because I don't think we're going we're gonna to have any need for him. So that is uh, Blackett gone and now Fang Ren. So we're back down to two left backs, Earl and Page. We are uh, expecting to play Nottingham Forest in one day's time. So we need a keeper and we do get the keeper by the name of Rodi De Boa. So I say true to my word from a, a, an episode quite a while ago where I was looking at this guy. He's 21 years old. We signed him for 1.1 million. He's 67 or 68 rated. I can't quite remember, but he is a very promising young Dutch keeper and he will be our number one ahead of Dylan Phillips or instead of Dylan Phillips, sorry, going into this season so guys don't worry if this uh, again episode feels a little bit rushed because there will be a lot more elaboration in the future but make sure you do leave a like on this one for me and also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well but thank you guys for watching once again i'll see you in the next episode where we will kick off our championship campaign and don't forget there is still a month remaining of the transfer window being open so i'll see you in the next episode guys cheers for watching and sweet